Right everyone, fresh intro, new colour scheme, it can only be a brand new season with Scott McDonald. Scott, before we get into you, what you've been up to over the summer, what Celtic have been up to over the summer, we must address the elephant in the room, or the elephant that's not in the room. He's moved on from 67 Hail Hail, some would say the star of the show, Mr David Walton, he's away. I can't believe it. Just before coming on, you know, to do the show, you told me that. I'm absolutely devastated. You never even gave me a text. So I'm, I'm just, I'm hurt, mate. I'm hurt. It's like being, he's cheated on me. He's just left me. Um, he'll be sorely missed. He really will. Um, but obviously, he's still be at all the games. He's one of our own, you know what I mean? So um, I'm sure he won't go, un go unnoticed as much as he probably wants to at games. Uh, but we wish him all the best, don't we? We definitely do. We thought we'd just sit him on the right hand side of the screen there, like old time's <laughs> sake. But we can get rid of him now forever. Um, he used to make you sorry before we go on. It used to make me look happy. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to That's miss. Who, who, who's going to fill the glum void this season? That's the big question. Maybe it's going to be me. I don't know. Um, yeah, David, all the best. Um, we will crack on, Scott. How's your summer been? Well, not so much a summer here since we last oh, spoke. Yeah. It's still pissing down from the heavens here. Honestly, another game cancelled this weekend for us. Um, they just keep coming. Uh, the floods just keep coming here. Um, as much as you've been getting 40 degrees there, it looks like Glasgow and feels like Glasgow out there at the moment. So that will please all your audience that uh, they're hearing someone from Australia say that at this moment in time. And that's why we're all flooding to Glasgow right now. Yeah, you were over, weren't you, for, for what, a couple of days? Yeah, it was. It was great to be back. Great to be back at the old home um, at Celtic Park, meet some familiar faces, uh, see some good friends, uh, managed to get around a lot of people at the time um, before I went to Slovakia to, to finish off more or less the UEFA Pro Licence with the SFA, which again was good to see some familiar faces. Darren O'D was on that, Greg Robertson, the former under-18s coach, Fran Alonso, obviously the women's head coach of Celtic was on it as well, Sean Maloney. So um, plenty of you know Celtic people involved in it, and it's uh, good to catch up with all of them, and good to catch up with so many people. Do you have aspirations at some stage to move back to Scotland and coach? Do you think, or, or Britain at uh, least? Look, with with doing your pro license, particularly the UEFA one, and, and with the S SFA, I think so. You know, I mean, it's not that I think so. I, I probably do so, but. Obviously, there's a lot of permutations within that in terms of opportunity and uh, family and whatever else. But uh, at the moment, I'm just happy learning and uh, going about my business right now. Uh, you know, we take Ange, for example. It's a 30-year process, right, in terms of where he's got to. So some get there quicker than others. Um, but at the moment, I'm just really happy doing what I'm doing. Now. And I say this to people a lot. Like, even as a player, you found them... Um, when you were happy at your happiest and you were just content and doing your job and you were doing it very well, then things come from that. If you start chasing and looking around and looking over your shoulder and wanting certain things, then it never came. So you've just got to concentrate on what you're doing at the moment and be happy in that process and, and just continue to do well in it and see what happens. So we're saying year 2052, Scott McDonald, manager of Celtic. That's the 30 year plan. <laughs> Tell you what, there's always a dream, isn't there? And uh, obviously, come back at Celtic at some point or another would would be another dream. I mean, we talked about this last year. Like, obviously, you've already lived the dream in in, in terms of one aspect um, to get a second bite of cherry and actually come back to the club again, like quite a few of my ex teammates have done. Then, then it's certainly um, something that you would love to do. Um, obviously, there's a lot of Aussies there right now, still in the thunder, Hamish. But it's great to see. Uh, in all, uh, and it's great to see so many Aussies getting the opportunity in Scottish football right now, and um, it's exciting times. And we're certainly going to get a lot of uh, airtime over here and, and, and watching the game as well, which is great. Yeah, we'll come on to one of those Aussies in this video. We'll actually be hearing from Aaron Moy, who I spoke to yesterday at Celtic Park, as well as Moritz Jens as well. So I've been up and down at Celtic Park like mad over the last few days, Scott. So we've got plenty coming on this video. In terms of Celtic, what have you made of what you've seen over the summer so far? Uh, better than, uh, obviously, last pre-season, I think. Um, a lot more stability within it. Yes, uh, People still look at results and, and be not happy because some of the results haven't, you know, they haven't won the games. But it's immaterial for me. As much as you want to win them, um, as much as you'd like to win them, as much as you don't want to not win them, 
Um, the only thing that matters is when that first kick of the the season kicks off again, and it's defending your title. So, I think they're in they're in a good place right now uh, in terms of the preparation, um, and they just need to be prepared for for game one. I know Ange didn't look entirely happy after the game in in Poland <laughs> midweek. There, um, I don't think he even looked at the interviewer at Celtic TV when he was talking because he was that upset by not winning the game in the second half performance but again that's good you know because uh the standards will never be dropped and he doesn't like to see when they are so i'm sure there was a few stern words for the players after the game particularly yeah um i, I think i've got an idea of what your answer is going to be here but pre-season how much does it matter to players in, in terms of results as a guy who i remember scoring a goal at mm. wembley once for celtic in pre-season mm. It's hard to say, really. I mean, as a as a player, a striker particularly, you want to score goals, right? Um, you always want to score goals in preseason because it gives you the confidence to go into that game one and, and feel that, right, you're ready to go. Um, but again, they don't really count. So all that matters is when you get to game one, right? Because no one remembers that you scored preseason as much as you're saying, remember me scoring, but they don't count on my stats. So I, I'm I'm more thinking as a player, right? I need to get my first goal of the season here. Like everything else is immaterial before now. Result are immaterial. You, you're not going to game one thinking about what's happened preseason. If you got a Tonkin or if you won six nil, doesn't really matter. So there's, it's hard to really say what preseason does for you because um, sometimes when you don't play as many glamorous games as well uh, as a Celtic player it's very very difficult then to rate I'm not saying raise the performances but the expectation levels are there straight straight away for you to win those games there was a lot of pre-seasons when I was there that we played a lot a lot of strong teams so it was exciting because you were challenging yourself against higher level caliber of teams I don't think Celtic have had the opportunity to do that in this pre-season let's be honest um, so it can be difficult sometimes uh, to get up to those standards uh, and get up for the games themselves. But there'll be no question they'll be ready um, when it comes to game one. And there has been some excellent performances anyhow. Um, but I've been in pre-seasons where I've lost majority of the games and then gone into game one and one. And v- vice versa, by the way. You win every game mm. and then you lose game one. So it's, it's really hard to take a, a real knowing of, of what, preseason is going to give you uh, just in terms of the individuals that you can watch in their performances usually that gives you a good telling tale though of what's going to happen yeah the Tony Mowbray season were brilliant in pre-season and, and look how that season went so mm-hmm. um Aussie influence you've already touched on it it's grown in Scottish football it's actually grown at Celtic since you were last on we lost mm. Tom Rogic much like David he's moved on and um, yep. we've gained Harry Kuehl and Aaron Moy Let's run through them individually, if you don't mind. Yep. Tom, Tom Rogic leaving the club, were you surprised at that? Well, hugely. I think everyone's very surprised in terms of what's gone on since then as well. Um, somewhat gone AWOL, you, you would have to say, uh, to a lot of parties, in, in, including the Australian head coach, where we really needed him in terms of those qualifications, and um, he didn't come. I, no one knows the reasoning behind it, so I'm not going to get into you know, whether it was right or wrong. Um, it's just interesting that that, that, that didn't happen. And uh, Tom still finds himself without a football club right now. And I, I still genuinely believe that he had years left on that on that deal. I, I, I don't know. It must have been a mutual consent that he left Celtic, um, that, that he wanted to leave for, for personal reasons, which, again, you have to respect. Um, but sad at the same time because, obviously, the... The job that, that, he, that he's done at Celtic and, and over the course of the time that he was there, nine years, um, he's left a lot of special memories. Um, so, and, and he's very hard to replace, albeit O'Reilly's doing a good job at the moment. Um, but there's a lot of football to be played to, to get to those levels. So we'll, we'll wait and see if he can contribute from goals and assist-wise throughout the season on, on what Tom can do. Um, so, you know, touching on Tom, yeah, it's, it's an interesting one and, and, and it was always going to be sad to see him leave. When you see him leaving on the final day of the season, walking off, crying, 60,000 fans chanting his name, do you get a bit jealous of, of him getting that, that final farewell that you didn't? Uh, not jealous, probably. Yeah, you are envious. But again, he's, he's done nine years at the club, Hamish, so he fully deserves that um, to my two and a half slash almost three. So, 
um, and won a hell of a lot more trophies than me. So I, I, I'm not too uh, begrudging of that, to be perfectly honest. Um, so no, no, no. Um, yeah, when you play that football club for that length of time, you deserve those types of send-offs. So it's wonderful for him and his family and you can see how much the club meant to him. And, and, and that's why it makes it more all the more interesting that, you know, he left the football club. Yeah, near Beaton, obviously, as well, getting a good reception. Mm. Harry Kuehl comes into the club. What was the, the mm-hmm. thoughts on that? First of all, do you, do you have, did you ever play with Harry Kuehl? Any kind of memories? Yeah. I played with H uh, a lot in the oh, national Are we team. on to H? I thought I was your H. No, he's H. Sorry. <laughs> no, H is H. Yeah. Um, you know, arguably our best ever football. Te- from a technical aspect, probably him and Marco Bresciano was probably the best two footballers uh, to have played for Australia technically. Um, successfully, you know, Tim Tim K was going to be probably the, the most successful national team player. Um, but H, without question, his talents and, and who he was. And like I, I remember that growing up and I was a ball boy when he was only 19 years of age playing for Australia against Iran in the, in the 97 World Cup qualifiers. And then you, you get the opportunity to play with a guy. Um, it was, yeah, pretty, pretty special in a sense. Um, we could argue, but I argued with everyone. Um, and, and H is very strong-minded and strong opinionated, but you have to be to get to the levels of where he is and, and the talents that he showed throughout his career. And he certainly believes in himself just as much as a coach as he does or as he did as a player. Um, you know, when he had some successful times as a coach, you know, he came through the Watford ranks. It was the under-23s coach there, which was a great learning for him. And then he went and uh, you know, went on his own pathway to, to Crawley Town there after that and did a pretty good job. Um, the, the only thing at talking at the time was probably you know, talking to Vince Grello, who, who who was looking after him at the time, who was an ex-Australian as well, was that he went to Notts County, which was probably a, a club that was you know, in the same league that had more money, but felt that probably I felt he, he could have done better than that, to be perfectly honest, because I felt he deserved it. That was just my opinion, but I think he was very ambitious and wanted to move quickly. And uh, in the end, it was a bit of a basket case for him. And I think he's went from one to the other because he's just so desperate and passionate about the game and wanting to improve himself, but also wanting to prove what a good coach he is or that he can that he can do it. So I think I think with that, unfortunately, there's been some bad experiences for him. But when you say bad, I think always in football, bad is good afterwards because you've learned so much from those occasions. So there's no question for me that Ari now or H right is a is a far more equipped coach first and foremost and and man manager right to help Ange um, than what he would have been previous for those learnings uh, at Oldham and then at Barnet as well. So you put Notts County, Oldham, and Barnet in there, and even the situations that he was going through at Crawley. I remember him telling me um, in terms of from the finances and everything else, it's tough down there. Um, and now gets the opportunity to come back and and reset himself and, and be on a bigger platform and, and learn from a, a fantastic head coach uh, in terms of, you know, what Andrew's done and we'll be able to, to teach him and, and just be at a fantastic club where you have all the facilities, all the top players. Look, there's no question, your job's easier when you have better players because it takes less words for you to get across what you need to get across. There's, there's, there's no question for that in terms of you put something up, yeah, you'll still need to talk through certain individuals, but... It allows you to express yourself. And now uh, there's an understanding, there's a telepathic understanding as well of what, what is needed. So he'll enjoy that. And, and I'm glad to see him, you know, there and uh, getting another opportunity because it's tough in, you know, football in terms of being coach or a manager. So the opportunity he's now got, it will help him elevate himself again and hopefully he can use this to, to, to be better as well and help yeah. Celtic obviously win the league again. Hopefully, I mean, you know, Ange likes to bring in young Aussie coaches from time to time, kind of further their careers. I think he gets a lot of sa- satisfaction out of doing mm-hmm. that. Uh, I was at the training day earlier in the week, and, and Ange and Harry Kuehl deep in conversation for five, ten minutes while everyone, mm-hmm. all the players are warming up. So I, I think those two are going to have quite a strong relationship. Probably be disagreements yeah. there as well. I don't know if you would, he, just, even he yeah. would have the guts to disagree with Ange, would he? No, he will. He will. Like, uh, to it. To a respectful way, it won't be like that. But uh, he'll he'll push, he'll poke, he'll prod. That's just the the way of the man. Like he, he's not going to not be himself, and that's what I like about H. You know, he's going to be himself, and you can see that already. And uh, he's quite buoyant around the players. 
from what I've seen from the, the clips and the, the Celtic TV stuff at the moment. Uh, he'll have the banner. So he'll have a connection with the players, which is great because uh, he was always a good laugh as a teammate. Uh, but the levels he's played at as well. And I think that was another particular reason probably why Ange looked at him as well. One being Australian, giving another Australian an opportunity, which he's done on numerous occasions, even when he, when he went to Japan, um, to give another platform for, for Australian coaches. But also that, you know, Harry's won a Champions League. So going into the Champions League and not having, let's put it, put it to, you know, in this in mind as well, that if you look at that, that backroom staff all the way through, even to, you know, my two mates, at, you know, the, the, under, the, the B team, they're all defensive coaches. They're all yeah. defensive players, ex-defensive players. There's no attacking coaches within the setup. So I think Ange probably looked at that and went, right, we, we need a more an attack type of coach who can individually coach our attackers. So I think Ange uh, has looked at that and it's perfect that, that H has come in and plus his European experience um, and his pedigree. So the players straight away will look at him and, and, and respect him as well and, and listen and, and want to buy into to what he's wanting to teach them. Hopefully, I mean, Damien Duff had a huge influence on the Celtic mm. squad a few years yeah. ago, so hopefully the same kind of thing. Um, Aaron Moy as well, we'll have a wee chat about him. Before we come on yep. to him, let's just hear what he had to say to me and the rest of Celtic fan media yesterday. Uh, Aaron, you've had a well-established career, well-travelled career as well. You've played at Huddersfield in the Championship, Brighton in the Prem and, of course, China. Your influence here, because there have been many things, your fellow countryman and as a, as a manager in, in European football, but what was your biggest influence in making the decision to come to this club? Biggest influence is the it's a huge club, amazing history. Um, yeah, I've seen the what the fans are like. It's, it's incredible, and obviously the team is fighting for trophies all the time. So this is the main the main reason. Yeah, you've had familiarity with Ange, of course, and being uh, Aussie and, and Tom Rogic as well. Have any of them spoke to you about the club and what what you excited for most about being at Celtic? Um, yeah, I've spoken to both, but uh, yeah, I asked Tom any tips once I signed and he just said, you don't need any tips, you're going to love it and uh, the change room's really easy to settle in and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I, I already know what, uh, what it sort of, um, I don't know, you can see that it's a massive club from the outside and yeah, once I got the opportunity to join, that was was a quick yes. So. Yeah. Aaron, you've you've obviously played in a couple of positions, mainly the kind of attacking midfield in your time in England. With the soccer rules lately, it's been kind of deeper number six. Where do you see yourself um, best? And also, have you spoken with the manager about where you play? Um, yeah, I can. I've played in different positions uh, throughout my career. From when I was, I played in like a double six a lot throughout my career. Also. Uh, higher up, um, I'm yeah. I'm here to play where the manager puts me, and um, yeah, I'm not sure where yet. Um, but obviously, I've played in many different central midfield roles. Um, so yeah, um, wherever the manager needs me, I'll. I'll do my very best. Yeah, and also just in Harry Q, um, there was a photo doing the rounds on Twitter for 06 when you were here with yeah. Harry Kiel. Um, what is it like to work with him now and how much are you looking forward to doing that? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Um, Harry obviously had an amazing career as a player and someone I always looked up to um, when I was growing up. Um, yeah, it would be good to get to know him more and um, yeah, um, try and learn from him as well because he's, he's got a lot of experience in the game um, and I'm looking forward to it for sure. And can I ask, um, you, you featured in the series both, both of them World Cup playoff matches, obviously you've not kind of played competitive club football since February time, how did you keep fit um, between that time? Because from what I've read in the Australian place, they were all kind of shocked that you were able to last both games, but what did you do yourself to kind of be ready and be prepared for both those matches? Yeah, obviously you got to, you have to take care of yourself, um, but I had the, the fitness coach of the national team come over to, to Scotland and he was training me for a few weeks 
um, to get me up to speed and um, he did a great job when I was a, managed to be be involved in the games and and then there was sort of like a pre-camp in Dubai f for a week before the camp started so that was handy as well training with a bunch of half the team sort of thing um, yeah so that was it was it all worked out because um, yeah obviously you question am I fit enough um, have I got my rhythm to play because these games are very important games for the, the national team but it all worked out and I'm I'm glad um, I was yeah, I was involved in it. Aaron, you've previously played in Scotland. You've also previously scored against Rangers as well. How much are you looking forward to playing in a derby match against Rangers? Yeah, obviously it's it's one of the biggest uh, derbies in the world. Um, every time I've watched the uh, watched one live one, the, the atmosphere was amazing. And something very special. So. Hopefully I can be involved in one, but for right now I'm just looking uh, forward to getting fit and um, get myself in the best possible shape to help. Well, can you talk to us a bit about your time in China? Apologies if you've already covered it. Just like what the football culture there is, and, and are you expecting much of an adjustment coming back to sort of British slash Scottish football? Yeah, it was a it was a good experience. Um, obviously, with the COVID, um, it sort of made it more challenging for me because uh, I didn't get to get my family over there. So just, I was away for long periods. Um, uh, but yeah, they have with this. There's good players in China. Lots of they attract. They get good players over there, and in my team, I had some top players I was training with every day. So. Yeah. Undoubtedly, you're a very technical player. Um, you're comfortable carrying the ball forward, and you've got an excellent range of passing. Which position do you feel you contribute the most to the, the team? Would it be like a defensive midfield or a six, an eight, or a ten? Um, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, I haven't I haven't <coughs> trained with the group yet, so I don't. The manager. Um, he's not really talked about which position he thinks he's me in. It's just it's early days and just trying to get fit and be in the best shape I can to to be involved. Yeah. Uh, how much are you looking forward to possibly playing in the Champions League group stages for Celtic? I am looking forward to it for sure. It's something I've never done, but um, I'm not thinking too that far ahead. I'm just thinking about getting getting fit and um, learning about my teammates. Meeting everyone because I've only been here in like a couple of days, so <laughs> I'm still learning names and um, yeah, stuff like that. Another Aussie signing, quite a, mm. a big signing as well in terms of of, of you Aussies. Um, kind of mixed reaction here. It's been it's been funny. I, I guess where you're from, they're they're all pretty pleased about this. Yeah, absolutely, because we're building to a World Cup as well, and we need Aaron Moy uh, fighting fit and and playing at a high caliber, you know, level of football. So when he left China, a um, bit of a surprise as well. Um, obviously, he made his financial package out there. You know, he's had great experience playing in the Premier League. Had to do it the hard way. Obviously, you know, started off at Bolton as a young kid. I remember him coming into the Australian national team set up as a, as a young boy. Didn't have much hair then either, by the way, uh, <laughs> I must say. But he's a lovely kid. He's always been quiet, as you can tell from his interview there. He's very humble, a uh, very shy type of character, um, but he doesn't play that way, that's for sure. Um, and you need a strong squad. What, what he'll allow Ange to do at certain times, I mean, Bitton's gone, okay? So he needed to replace someone who can play. In now, he's not of the stature of Bitton, but what he does do really well, you know, his game's changed a little bit over time, but he can sit in front of that back four and he can control the game for you. He'll take the ball, he'll restart things. And I imagine when he plays that, you know, Callum will, will end up playing a little bit further ahead in certain games, um, whether that be in European games or domestic games. He'll give you more control in the game. That's exactly what he'll do. You know, he's a fantastic technical footballer. 
Um, and he's still got plenty to give. He, he's not that, you know, he's, he's only just, what, 31 now. So it's not like he's over the hill. Let's, uh, you know, and he's a top quality player. Um, so I think it's a steal in the sense, you know, a free transfer. Um, and he's chewing at the bit. He's got Scottish ties. He's played at St. Mirren before. He knows the place. So he's not coming to a foreign country. He, he knows what he's coming to already. He knows the setup. He knows what it what it is to play for one of these, you know, big clubs uh, playing in the Premier League. But he knows Celtic as well playing against them. And he knows what it what it means to the fans and what it's going to take to to win the league. So uh, I think it's a really, really astute sign from Ange. And uh, I think he will be, look, will he start every game? I don't think so. That That's me being honest. Could he push himself in there? Maybe. But he's got a lot to remove in O'Reilly, Callum, and Hatate. That's, you know, that for me, that's going to be your three. And then Moy is going to be the one that comes in and out of that um, to help that out. And then obviously you've, you've got the other the other players that are going to be pushing for places as well. Yeah, he knows Ange. He knows the way Ange wants to play. Ange mm. knows him well. So I think that's quite an important part of this deal. Just briefly, what have you made of the other business we've done this summer? You're talking Carter Vickers, Jota being signed permanently. Bernabe has come in. Uh, Jens, mm. who we'll hear from in a minute, has come in as well. Yes. Yeah, look, um, all places where you know we talked at the end of last season needed to tie up the low knees. That that was the the first and foremost thing, and Celtic have done a great job in doing that bringing back Carter Vickers and, and Jota, they have to live up to the expectation now. That's going to be the challenge for them already. I mean, Carter Vickers makes a little bit of an error in the, in the game midweek there. Um, I know Ange won't be pleased about that, but they have to come with the same standards now that they've signed full-time. It, it's always hard. Second season, and when you come with expectation now, Celtic fans are coming with you now. You have to deliver. So they need to be on point, and they, they need to be able to deliver that. Um, Yenzo, you know, let's wait and see in terms of a loan from from Lorient, uh, left-sided player, um, another centre-back probably needed. We don't know what's going to go on with Julian still, whether he's coming or going. Um, so he looks dominant from the clips that I've seen um, and, and playing in the French League. He, he looks more than capable to play in the, the, the Scottish Premier League particularly. Um, again, he'll it'll be difficult for him to, to shift Starfelt you know, and, and that Carter Vickers partnership once he's back, stuff out. Um, and Bernabe, I think we always talked about another left-sided player, left-back coming into the football club. And it's going to be a good fight between him and Taylor. Not same stature as Taylor, which I was surprised at um, in terms of physicality and height. I thought they would have gone with someone a little bit different from that. But uh, his qualities are exciting. So I'm looking forward to, to seeing what he brings to, to Celtic as well during the season. Yeah, I think he's looked all right so far, Bernabe. Mm. I think when he gets properly up to speed, you, you'll you see what he's about. We've seen well, glimpses to, of it so far. He needs to learn how Ange wants him to play too. That's, that's where Taylor's got the upper hand, hasn't he, in terms of like the, that at times playing inverted to then going out to going in again. It's going to take him time to adjust in terms of the, the way that Celtic make those movements and, and par- passages of play. Yeah. Right, let's hear from the other man, Moritz Jens, and then we'll, we'll finish off with another wee chat. You spoke last week about the opportunity to sign for Celtic last season before heading to France. How close was the deal to actually happening last season? Um, it, was, it was very close, um, but at the end, it just didn't go through the line, you know, unfortunately, and uh, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. You also mentioned that this was a dream move for you, uh, was, your, was your exact words. Why, is, why Celtic? Tell us why Celtic was a dream. Um, for me, you know, it's a big, big European club, you know, um, they have the special shirt with the stripes, you know, the, the hoop logo, you know, it's, it's very special to me. So for me, it was a perfect choice. Yeah. For FC Lorient last season, you played centrally in mm-hmm. a back three or as a right centre back. What do you feel was your strongest position? Um, I think right or left centre back. Obviously, we play with a four in the back at uh, Celtic. Um, but I also like to play in the middle, so for me it, it doesn't. Ma- I don't mind, you know, left or right. It's for me perfect. We play in a, a, with a high line, uh, a focus on winning the ball uh, back high up the pitch. Mm-hmm. What skills or qualities do you have that will help fit into this system? Um, I think my organisation skills, my aggressivity, um, my anticipating, 
of the situation, you know, because we will need it, because we will press high and lots of running behind. Also, my speed on the first meet is important. So I hope I can help uh, with the traits I have, the team. Lawrence, we spoke to someone who knew you from your time in Switzerland. Um, he said you're very good with the ball at your feet. Is that something that you, you do think you, is a strength in your game? Uh, yes, definitely. Um, you know, I like to have the first uh, the first pass in the game. You know, I like to create. I like to give as soon as possible the ball to the midfielders uh, in good positions so they can create the attack. And um, yeah, I just like it. I like to be in control and you know to dominate the game. And we know that training under Costa Coglu is very intense. How did you find it earlier today, your first one? Um, yeah, it was it was very good. You know, I really enjoyed it. Um, it was a training I liked. It was intense, um, very offensive. Um, also, lots of possession, which suits my game style. Obviously, in France, we didn't have the same style because you know we fight for the survival, so it's a different type of football. But this year is really the style uh, that suits me. Yeah. Hi, Maurice. Hello. You spent last year with Lorient and you had to play at Lausanne. Are you now looking to put down roots at club and can you help me be that club? Yes, for sure. It uh, it would be my dream to definitely stay at Celtic. Yeah. Great. And last year with Carl Starfield came in debut season, great partnership with Cameron Carter Vickers. Yeah. He's coming back from injury now. Do you see it as an opportunity to get some first team football there? Um yes, I, I think it's a good opportunity for me. But um, you know, vice versa. It can be with uh, Vickers, it can be with Starfield, you know, together. Um so it's very important to have a good relation with all the defenders, you know, and at the end of the day, it's important to play good as a as a partnership because we need to win all the games, and we need to win trophies. Moritz, you um, talked about your relationship with um, Matt O'Reilly from your time at Fulham. Um, uh, Everyone, yeah. Don't worry, I'm not going to ask about him specifically. Um, no, I was just wondering, since you played with him at Fulham, how do you think you've improved as a player now that your teammates again? Oh. Three, four years ago, I think. Um, good question. It's very hard to tell because Matt is, you know, Matt, uh, you know, really exploded here last season. I hear. Yeah. Um, you know, he's a great player. Has a fantastic left foot. Um, yeah, I think we both improved a lot as people. You know, we got more mature. We got more. We improved all of our skills that we have, and um, yeah. There's not much more I can say to that yeah. question. So, yeah. Yeah. And uh, just the same question is this. Um, obviously, with the Champions League coming up and, um, and, and everything that's, that's involved with playing at a higher level and things like that, how much are you looking forward to, to hopefully representing the club at that level? Um, first of all, I'm looking forward to the atmosphere yeah. because that's all I've been hearing about. And I've also been watching the, in YouTube the videos of Barcelona when they come here. Or, it would be amazing, you know, it would be a dream come true, you know, to play Champions League football for a massive club. And, you know, I hope we can uh, win as many games as possible. Moritz, you spoke about uh, the sort of changing over to Celtic from Lorient and how it was a relegation. And Celtic will be more attacking than Lorient. You defended a bit deeper. How are you look, much looking forward to that style of play, maybe a short passing game? Um, I'm actually very excited about it because, like I said, it's a style I want to play and the style that suits me. Um, it will be much different because um, you will enjoy more the game, you know, because it's what we all like to see is attacking football, beautiful football, and not, you know, sitting back. So it will be very exciting. You've done pre season with Lorient and you're just here with Celtic, but are you ready to play at the weekend and will you be ready for the start of the season in just over a week? Uh, yes, I will be ready for the weekend and I hope also be ready for the, the first league game. But at the end of the day, it's a decision of the coach who makes the lineup. So I will see and I will train as hard as possible. Moritz, when you were at Tom, you played under Peter Grant, and who's a, a legend to yeah. Celtic. Can I ask what it was like to, to play under Peter in the 23s and what you, you learned from the team with Peter? Oof. Um, great, great person. Um, like really a gentleman, you know, really, really great person, really nice, you know, friendly, um, really tries to improve you as a player. Um, on the pitch, different personality, very <laughs> like a lion, you know, very, very aggressive. No, I, I learned a lot from him as a, as a person, you know, also to be more aggressive, you know, um, which I was lacking at that time under him. Um, so yeah, after after that season with Peter, I you know moved on obviously to to Switzerland and to France, and then my game improved, you know, and my aggression improved as well, and it's now one of the key factors of my game.
So there we go, that was Moritz Jens chatting to me at Celtic Park earlier today. Um, a nice big guy, hopefully he does well. Just in general, Scott, we're, we're feeling good. We've got one more pre-season game to go. It's Norwich tomorrow at Celtic Park. Again, probably a slight step up. You know, a team who have just come out of the Premier League. Um, hopefully another another good workout for the team. We'll wait and see what kind of team Ange puts out. And then we're into it properly. Flag day against Aberdeen next Saturday. Yeah, the big one's not far ahead. It's crazy how how quickly it's come around. I don't know if it's come around as quickly for you, Amy. We've been doing but, um... videos all summer, Scott. <laughs> you've been dragging the ass out of it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Basically, now you've got stuff to really talk about, which is exciting. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> no, it's it's good, you know. And obviously, yeah, Norwich coming again. It's not a massive uh, club. No disrespect to Norwich. It's not a big tie that would normally come to Celtic at this time of the season. Um, but it's a great opportunity for Celtic fans to see their team again before they kick start the season and obviously fly the flag day. And that's when the real, the real stuff begins. But uh, in terms of looking at that team, you can't really see much different in, uh, you know, in terms of what the team's going to look like at the very start of the season. I think it will be very much similar to, to what we seen at the end of last season. Um, but all the same, uh, they've got everyone fit, which is, which is great news. So, you know, Hatate scoring a wonderful goal. Maeda getting on the score sheet as well. We've got Kyogo fit as well, finally. I think that's really been key and important that he's had a full preseason now and we're going to see him back to his best. So I'm looking forward to seeing what that brings. And the window doesn't shut for another month, Amy. So there's going to be plenty of speculation and lots of talk to come um, to see who else comes through that door possibly before, before it shuts. Still need another striker? Uh, that's arguable. I mean, Yakimakis for me has been, been brilliant. Back end of last season, if he can hit, finishing equal top score, already scored this preseason. I like him. Uh, you know, yeah. he's 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 a, he's different to what Celtic have got, um, and he will be so important when this season begins in certain games as well. When you need something different up there, that physical presence as well, and he's just got a pure hunger. All he wants to do is score goals. I love that about him. You know, um, I, I just love the fact that he just wants to be the main guy and, and he doesn't care about the others around him in the sense, in a respectful way, that he wants to finish top scorer, you know, and he wants to play every game, which is healthy. I think it's great for Ange and yeah, Celtic. I, I love the big man too. It's, uh, yeah. it's just exciting, isn't it? All of these players, you know, we've got, I just think there's so much more to come from so many of them. You know, all the new signings. Kyogo. I mean, we only got Kyogo for six months last season. We only got mm-hmm. Yakimakis for six months last season. Correct. It's it's amazing to see what, what could happen. Um, Scott, it's been great to have you back on. It's just been a bit of a catch-up, this one. We'll get into the proper kind of nitty-gritty next week ahead of mm-hmm. Flag Day. We'll maybe have someone else joining us as well at that stage. Um, but thank you very much for your time. Pleasure. Great to be back. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, for watching. We are back tomorrow after the Norwich game.